What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon here in San Antonio, Texas. This video, we're gonna be going over how to read a lumbar x-ray. I made another video about lumbar MRIs and I'll put that right up here. But this is just a quick tutorial um, on how to read these x-rays and whether you're a physical therapist or a medical student, chiropractor, uh, physician, resident, trying to learn how to read x-rays. I'm gonna give you a little, a couple tips of what I look for when I'm evaluating patients with lumbar pain or leg pain. So these x-rays will uh, usually help us determine kind of what's going on. So we're gonna jump right over. Normally, the x-rays that we get are what's called an AP and lateral. AP means the direction of the, the beam that is shot to take that x-ray, and lateral, looking at it from the side. So these are pretty standard x-rays, lateral of the lumbar spine, AP of the lumbar spine. Um, and the first thing that I look at is usually for fractures, if there's any slippage of the vertebrae, if there's a lot of arthritis, if something is abnormal, scoliosis, and, and I'm gonna show you some case examples of those. Uh, so the first thing that I look for is, and I, I count the number of lumbar vertebrae. There are some patients who have abnormal anatomy, which means they have more than the normal five lumbar vertebrae. And I usually count them on the AP view to start off with, which is this view to the right here. Um, and each of the vertebrae should be this kind of square shaped uh, in, in, in shape. So, and they should be pretty consistent uh, throughout the lumbar spine. So this is the fifth, the fourth, the third, the second, the first. And you can tell this is the, the 12th vertebrae, T12, because you can see the first rib here. Um, and then looking at it from the side here, this is the fifth, the fourth, the third, the second, and uh, the first lumbar vertebrae. And then we're getting into the, the, the sacral uh, region. But AP lateral standard x-rays that we get for patients who come in with low back pain or leg pain. Sometimes if we're assessing instability or if we're looking for something specific, like some uh, pathology at the facet joints, which are these connections of bones in the back of the spine. If we're looking for what's called PARS defects, which is a portion of the uh, bone that may be fractured, then we get what's called oblique films, which means the patients kind of turn to their side, or we get what's called flexion extension views. This is basically x-rays that are taken when the patient's bending forward and when they're bending backwards, called extension. Um, you can see here that all of these, the shapes of these uh, bones here are pretty square, nice and square. We have our spinous process, which are these prominent, prominent areas back here. And these are the areas of your, if you feel along your lower back, you can feel these spinous processes here. Uh, you have your transverse processes here on both sides. Uh, we call them the TPs. And this is something that we look for in surgery, actually, when we're placing pedicle screws. These are the pedicles here, these little dots here, pedicles, pedicles, two at each level, pedicle, and then transverse process. So this is the anatomy that I look for when I'm placing screws into the spine. I'll look for the transverse process here, and I, my goal is to try to put a screw right into that pedicle so it ends up into the vertebral body here. And then in between each of the bones is the disc or the cushion. That's the shock absorber for the spine. This disc is made up of a lot of water. Um, it's made up of an outer layer called the annulus fibrosus and a inner layer, which is called the nucleus pulposus. This is like the jelly portion uh, that, is, that usually spits out when you hear about a disc herniation. But at each of these levels here, the disc should be nice and symmetric. Uh, and then you can see it is here at L2, L3, L3, L4, L4, L5. And sometimes, usually at the inferior portion of the spine, this disc here will desiccate quicker than other areas, which means it dries out, it becomes degenerated, it becomes worn out, and a painful and degenerated disc can be painful and, and a cause of low back pain. So you can see the discs here are nice and symmetric um, at each of these levels here. When you hear about a disc herniation, 
It's this nucleus pulposus, which we can't see on x-ray. Most of this disc is made of collagen as well as water. And this nucleus and the annulus fibrosus is really strong type three collagen, uh, which holds this nucleus pulposus in. When this herniates here, or this jelly-like material comes out, it can press on the spinal cord or the nerves and cause low back or leg pain. You can see here, this is a normal disc, and this is a herniated disc. You see this nucleus pulposus has ruptured through the annulus here and is pressing on the nerve root. So when we're doing surgery for a decompression procedure or we're going in to take the pressure off the nerve, this herniation, um, this is what we're trying to go after here. This is the sacrum. So it's at the bottom of your spine, L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, and then the sacrum, this triangular shaped structure here on the AP view. You can see it's kind of shaped like a triangle and sometimes patients can have pathology or some fractures of this area too. Back here is the foramen. This is where the nerve exits the spine at every single level here. You can see it's nice and open, nice and open, nice and open here. But at the bottom area of the spine, this area is a little bit collapsed here. And this is where that nerve that can get pinched right here can cause uh, some pain that shoots down the leg or some back pain. From the area here that is normally supposed to be open, it gets really tight and that can cause a lot of pain down the leg called radiculopathy. Um, you can see like a makeshift uh, herniation here that, that's very close to that nerve root. And depending on which nerve root it is, is irritated or compressed, that can cause certain areas of your leg or your back to hurt. Up here is the ribs. You can see, as I mentioned before, the T12, that's the, um, the 12th. Uh, vertebrae, you can see the rib, and that's, what, that's how I know that's the uh, first um, or the last thoracic spine vertebrae, and then we start counting the lumbar spine. So ribs on both sides, if you count all the way up, you'll go to T1. Um, so you can see, as we talked about, the, the foramen is here. You, you can see how narrow this foramen is, how much smaller as compared to the foramen here. So this nerve can get pinched can cause some compression and some radiculopathy uh, down the leg. You can see after a fusion, this actually increases this foraminal height is what it's called. So that gives more space for that nerve. You can see we did this just with uh, putting this cage in there to jack open this space. So the patient uh, can, has, uh, can have some relief of their pain uh, just by indirectly decompressing this area, basically making more room for this nerve as compared to before surgery here. Um, and then a couple cases, lumbar spondylosis. This is basically the wear and tear of the spine. Everyone's gonna get this as we age. Um, you can see this patient here has pretty advanced, pretty severe arthritis of their spine. This is basically just arthritis, just like you get arthritis in your hip, your knee, your shoulder. Everyone's gonna get it in their back as well. Um, yeah, I can't even see their intervertebral disc. They're pretty collapsed here. Uh, lots of bone spurs. He's lost his lumbar lordosis, which is curvature in your spine. Um, his back is really flat here. Lots of arthritic changes in the sets back here. So this is a pretty advanced kind of uh, x-ray of the lumbar spine. And most patients uh, who have arthritis, we can usually treat them with physical therapy anti-inflammatory pain medications, and then sometimes injections. This is a lumbar scoliosis. Um, this patient uh, has a little, about a 30 degree scoliosis that is going to the right side. So this is the right, this is the left. You can see this can certainly press on some nerves and can cause some compression into the spine that can shoot pain down the legs when they walk, lots of back pain. But a lot of patients with lumbar scoliosis, we certainly can treat. Just because you have a scoliosis does not mean that you need surgery. Most of it can be treated with conservative treatment unless those things fail. And then lumbar spondylolisthesis. This is a fancy word for slippage of the vertebrae. If you run a line down the back of these vertebral bodies here, you can see that this one here is not lined up um, according to the other ones. So this, this patient has a slippage of their vertebrae this space that's in between here, there is, uh, is decreased as compared to the, the disc that's here. Um, that can certainly cause some uh, pain that is shooting, uh, that can shoot down the leg. 
uh, but if there's instability of the spine, if the vertebrae is moving backwards and forwards every time you're moving or walking, uh, that can certainly be painful and those patients may require fusion operations. And then vertebral compression fractures. So these are fractures of the lumbar spine. You can have these in the thoracic spine, cervical spine, and the sacrum, um, but it's usually it's caused by a fall or some type of injury that um, usually in patients who have osteoporosis. But the patients can have these in car accidents, fall from roof, fall from a ladder, and have these fractures. Most of these can be treated without surgery. Um, we, we need to get the patient treated for osteoporosis just because when you have a fracture in your, your back like this, um, it's most likely due to your underlying bone health. So we, I usually send patients for osteoporosis evals. There's a procedure that we can do for patients that fail conservative treatment. It's called a kyphoplasty, where we go in and put some cement into this area here to try to restore the height. And you can see that there's a loss of height of this vertebral uh, body here. So intro to how to read a lumbar x-ray. This is exactly what I look for uh, when I'm reviewing patients. I'm seeing patients in my office. When I'm looking at their lumbar x-rays, this is the things that I'm looking for. You can't forget to look outside of the bone also for soft tissue lesions, for masses, for any abscesses that may show up that uh, some patients may present within their psoas muscles. So those are things to kind of look out for. But as a general overview, uh, this is you know how lumbar x-rays are read. This is Dr. Webb, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.